Welcome to the Metaphysical Manifesting Podcast with intuitive light worker, national speaker, metaphysical teacher, and best selling author Lisa Kessler. What is it you want to manifest? Are you looking to increase your income, change careers? Maybe you want to manifest a new home or a new car. Are you ready to bring love into your life? You have come to the right place. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're here today. I can't wait to introduce you to Michelle, one of my clients from Canada. When we started working together, her big dream was to switch careers. She wanted to be a full-time writer. And she tried a few times before, and it hadn't worked out. So this time she came for a little extra support. I'm not going to tell you how it turned out. I'll let her tell you herself. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for agreeing to talk to me today. How are you? Hi. Thanks, Lisa. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I was so excited that you agreed to chat because I think you're going to inspire a lot of people. So we've been working together, I think, since February. And when we started, you were trying to get away from teaching accounting and make writing like your full-time gig instead of a hobby. So you want to tell everybody kind of where you were at and what you were thinking when you when you first signed on? Uh, yeah, so I was a little bit scared because my teaching contract was ending and I wasn't sure how I was going to continue paying my bills without having a plan going forward. Normally, I would look for another teaching position, but um, there was a few things that were telling me that that was not the right option for me this time around. (laughs) So I was just trying to um, figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to make a writing a career going forward. Yes. And, and you were very brave because you even like turned in your teaching laptop. What was that? (laughs) What was that leap of faith like? Um, Yeah, again, it was scary because I was thinking, okay, if I hand this in, that means I'm not going to be looking for more teaching jobs. So what does that mean for me exactly? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I had tried to make writing a career before in the past. So it's been several years, probably about seven years where I've been trying to make a go at writing as a career. And then I just keep going back to accounting because that's what I had done for so long. So I just sort of said, I use that handing in the laptop as sort of a sign that this is this is it. I can go forward with a new career, no more going back, because that's what I was constantly doing is I would do some writing and I would find some uh, writing jobs and then I would go back and look for the regular paycheck type of work, which always was related to accounting. So I just sort of use that handing in the laptop as my sign that that's the no more going back, no more flip flopping. (laughs) Right, right. Well, and when we when I first start working with somebody one on one, we always do that year ahead reading where we pull cards and figure out what our focus is each month. And when we do that, we don't really know what that card means. We just know what the focus is going to be. And it's funny because July was your first month making more money writing than you would have teaching. And that month we had gotten the Phoenix, which is reinvention of yourself. And we both went, wow. So how did it feel to you in only five months, five months, you, you, you know, made the same income. How did that feel to you after all those times of trying? It felt amazing, actually. And I, I didn't even click that I had done that until I was sort of doing some planning for the next month and looking at the writing down in my calendar, which bills needed to be paid and things like that. And when the paychecks for the writing work that I had done were coming in and then I realized, oh, wow, I actually made more this month than I had when I was teaching. So yeah, that was really awesome. Um, And it wasn't even something that I was consciously trying to do. Whereas in the past I had done that and I was striving, I was always striving for a certain number um, dollar wise for income from writing. And it's interesting that when I stopped doing that, it actually worked out. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, trusting and focusing on other things to make it happen. Um, So yeah, it was just reaffirming to see that. Yeah. And how do you think that your mindset changed when you decided to just trust this is who I am versus I have to prove who I am with this number? How? Yeah, that's something. So I've always been told to just trust and I've always known that I need to just trust. But 
It wasn't until you said that it's not our job to figure out the how that it finally clicked for me because I was always trying to trust. But then I was going back and looking for jobs in my old field of accounting, where I was where I had more confidence. And then I realized, wait, that's not telling the universe the right message. That's not telling the universe I want to be a writer. Um, and so like letting go of that how and um, not constantly searching the job boards anymore. <laughs> um, I think that really helped in just thinking of it that way, that it's not my job to figure out the how that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm to let the universe know what it is that I want. And then the universe can do that part. That just made so much sense and something just clicked then for me. Yay. I'm so glad. Yeah. Cause I say that a lot, but, but it's very hard. That is for me, that's the hardest part of manifesting is trusting that I don't need to know how I need to just keep putting out what I want and why I want it. And for you, you wanted to be a writer and you are making a lot of income from nonfiction, from articles and, and you're still writing your fiction, but the nonfiction is really what's powering the train. And I love that you were open to be a writer and you let the how, you know, so you're being flexible and you're like bouncing between books and articles and all that kind of thing. Was that something you had done before or is that new? I had written articles before, but not specifically in my field of accounting. So when I first tried to make a go at freelance writing as a full-time income, I was doing all kinds of, um, I guess you would call them business to business blog posts. So it was for all different areas. So I was writing about healthcare and I was writing about um, cubes that you can display your awards from sports and like so it was very <laughs> random what it was basically whatever I was assigned that week I would write about um, and somebody had actually told me that, that I should be writing in the financial uh, arena just because of my background in accounting and I tried that but I went about it in such a way that it just it really it didn't work out I was trying to do content creation for accountants and selling that as a service rather than searching for um, freelance jobs that were already looking for somebody to write about accounting. So when that didn't work out, I, I gave up and of course went back to my old patterns of searching for jobs, <laughs> <laughs> looking for that regular paycheck and that that sort of all just fizzled out. Um, so yeah, I had tried it before, but not in the same way. And so this just sort of combining the writing with accounting, it just clicked more, I guess, this time. And I just realized, oh, I, I actually have... I can write these articles and still have enough time to work on my own projects, which is really awesome because that was never the case in any of the jobs that I was working as well. Okay. I love that. And um, what do you think held you back before? Because you mentioned that, you know, you tried this a few times before, and this is the first time that you really became a writer instead of wanting to be. So what held you back before? I think it was fear. Like I was always feeling that need for the money and always worrying, how am I going to pay my bills? So always like whether it was searching the job sites or looking for another blog post to write, um, regardless of what the topic was, or even regardless of how much it paid, like just that constant feeling of hustling because of being worried for where the money's going to come from. Whereas now it was just, I just let go of all of that, like focusing on that again, that it's not my job to figure out how it's going to happen. Just from focusing on what I enjoy, which is the writing um, and just putting that energy out there. Um, I didn't feel that fear this time. Like I was just not even whenever I would start to think, OK, how am I going to pay this upcoming bill? I just let it go. I just, you know, sort of put it back into the universe and sent out the message. OK, I need a little bit of help. Maybe you can show me the how part now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> just, then I would just let it go and stop worrying about it. And I didn't go to the job boards. I didn't start searching for something, which is what I would do in the past. Yeah. So it was almost like as soon as you let go of the scarcity mindset and, and stopped letting fear drive your train, it allowed the universe to go, here you go, right? I mean, one week you needed the money and boom, you had two articles and then another week, boom, four articles, right? So how how do you feel moving forward? Do you feel more confident now that you can, you know, this? you're a writer now? 
Yeah, I do feel more confident, but that fear does still creep in. Like every day, it's still a thought like, oh, what if I don't get any articles this month? <laughs> and again, I just have to do the work and let it go and relax mm -hmm. about it and just know that the universe has got it under control. It's all good. I don't need to worry about it. Um, because those times where I have needed money to pay for stuff, the articles have come in, even if it's last minute, they've still come in when I've needed them mm -hmm. too. So I can look back at those past experiences and realize that it is going to work out. There's no need to start getting all, you know, monkey mind or whatever you call it, where you're right. constantly worrying <laughs> because I am a worrier naturally. So I do need to work I on am it too. <laughs> constantly. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, just yeah, letting it go and much. just, yeah. <laughs> feeling that feeling that happiness of what it feels like to be a writer and not feeling that sort of like dread of job searching yeah. and all that not so nice yes. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Love it. You have come so far so fast. And that brings me to the mastermind group because um, you joined the mastermind group, I think, three or four months ago. And how has that impacted um, all of this manifesting for you? Have you noticed a difference? Yeah, it's a, it feels like another level of manifesting because we're manifesting as a group and we're doing the rituals every week as well. Mm -hmm. It's just another way for me to quiet my mind. The, the rituals always help with that to get those negative thoughts and limiting beliefs out of my head um, and just let it go, which I need because as I said, I'm constantly <laughs> worrying. So having a weekly um, activity to do as well as the support from the group and everybody else manifesting at the same time and even just hearing what everyone else is working on, it just is comforting to know that we're all working on this, trusting and letting it go. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think that often uh, when I work with people, the first thing they do is they have not told anyone <laughs> of what they're trying to do, which is the opposite, really, of you need that support system. And so do you think it helps when you're in the mastermind, and we have a little mastermind super secret Facebook group and all this stuff, does it help sometimes when the fear comes up to know that you're not alone, that there's other people doing the same thing? Yes, definitely. Because I mean, it does come up often. And it's just nice to know that it comes up for other people as well, too. I mean, having that level of trust that things are going to work out is not easy. And for me, right. especially, it's just constantly <laughs> working on it. But now it's feeling like the work is really fun. And um, I feel like the group really helps with that, too. It just makes it fun to know that there are people there to support me as I'm working through it. Yeah. And do you think that we also in the mastermind, we're always doing that visualizing every week of everyone getting their things. And it seems to uh, like speed up the manifesting process? Have you noticed that? <laughs> I'm always like, wow. But uh, do you feel like that really helped you, you know, move quicker down this path? Yeah, I did. And it, yeah, you're right. It definitely did speed things up when we're all working on it together. And I think the other thing for me too, is it's nice to put energy towards other people instead of yes. Um, worrying about myself. So then it takes those yes. worries off me and turns it into a positive thing, putting the energy for uh, whatever everybody else is working towards. So I really like that part as well. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that, but that's true. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can take some of that worry energy and you can like have a focus that doesn't have to do with you. I love that. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it's not no longer worrying because it, it takes my mind off of me and then thinking about right. whoever it is that I'm sending the energy to at that time. And yeah, it just, it feels nice. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Hadn't even thought about that angle. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let me see, what would you say to somebody who's thinking of doing this work? What would you, what would you say to them? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Give it a try for sure. Yeah. Um, and I, sorry, go I was going to, I was going to ask, how do you, you know, how did you crank up your courage to invest in yourself? I think that was part of trusting again. Um, because I knew that I wanted to work with you one-on-one. -on -one, and then I also, I was interested in the group and we started working one-on-one. -on -one, and then when you mentioned it later, I was still interested, well, even more interested. Um, and yeah, I just had to trust that I would get some articles to pay for investing in myself. And um, I'm fortunate that I was raised in such a way that I was always taught that it's never 
a waste to invest in yourself. So that's, I'm always willing to do that. Maybe even too much. So, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I had to trust that the funds would show up for me to be able to invest in myself. I and mean, it's definitely been so very worth it. So yeah, I highly recommend that anyone who's considering it, try to trust that it's going to work out for you to be able to do it. Yeah. And that is uh, an interesting thing because money is just energy. I'm always telling people all it is, is energy that we have deemed worth our effort. You know, we, we put out this much work and then we get this many pieces of paper that represent that work. And so basically when you pay for something, you are simply exchanging energy for energy, right? And so when you exchange energy for yourself, you are giving the universe like this huge message that, you know, I'm ready for transformation. Let's do this because all it is, is energy. So um, it's always scary to make that investment in yourself. But man, once you do it, it's like turning a switch. I mean, did you feel that when you first, you know, decided, OK, I'm going to do it? How did things change rapidly? Well, I definitely felt that nervousness or fear that you know, fear about spending the money on myself instead of something else. Um, it just went away. Once I made the decision, it was just gone. And it and it, I knew that it was the right decision. And I knew that going forward, I would be receiving that energy back to me. Um, so that's something that years ago, I heard in a um, money mastermind that I was doing. And it was where if you give money, if you think of it coming back to you, however many times over you want to think of it, and then every time you pay for something, you're thinking of it returning back to you. And that many times, it just feels so much better to spend. And especially on yourself, knowing that that investment in yourself is going to come back to you so many times over, like return on investment, if you will. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, just one more thing, that investment that you made in yourself, and now you're a writer, how how has it affected all the areas of your life that now you get to be a writer full time? Well, I for sure have more flexibility than I would if I was working a job, working somebody else's hour. So that is really important to me because that was something from the beginning, whole reason why I wanted to be a writer was so that I had that flexibility. And I feel like now I also am uh, more structured as far as my schedule, my writing schedule every day, whereas before it seemed like it was just something I would do after I did everything else, sort of as an afterthought. So now it just feels like 100 percent I'm, I'm working on these projects and every day this is what I'm working on. And um, yeah, it just feels really good. Like it's it doesn't feel like this sort of hobby, I guess, like what it did in the past that I would work around everything else I was doing. <laughs> now it's the main thing. It just it feels relaxing and good to have that flexibility as well. I love that. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Um, <laughs> hopefully we have inspired others. I'm sure we have. Um, changing careers is always scary, but it's always such a huge high when you finally have manifested a work life that you enjoy. That's that's huge. Yes. So congratulations to you. I'm so happy for you. Um, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and thanks for sharing your story with everyone. I really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Metaphysical Manifesting Podcast with Lisa Kessler. If you have questions or comments, or if you'd like to work with Lisa to manifest your dreams, you can connect with her through her website at metaphysicalmanifesting.net. That's also where you can claim your free weekly tarot reading and manifesting tips. Make sure you subscribe or follow the Metaphysical Manifesting Podcast on your favorite podcasting site so you never miss another episode. As Lisa likes to say, we can make magic when we bring the universe into the equation. Remember, you don't have to do it alone. If you'd like more information about Lisa, Metaphysical Manifestation Mentorship, or the Manifesting Magic Mastermind, visit her website at metaphysicalmanifesting.net.